Welcome online guys, Tomagotchi here and welcome to the first episode of Tomagotchi Draws. The reason I'm doing this is because in 2017 I actually reignited my passion for drawing and decided, you know what, maybe this wouldn't be a bad idea for a video series alongside my Let's Plays. And this is what I meant by change for the channel because I wanted to do more than just Let's Plays and I like drawing so much I might as well make videos of it, so here we are. Now this video is kind of already a week late and I'm not going to do anything too spectacular but I do want to take this opportunity to show you my previous works that I've drawn to kind of give you an idea of what to expect from this series. The series itself will be focused on me actually drawing but this is more of a look back video so anyway all that out the way let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are on the computer, and these are all of the drawings that I've done, that I've scanned in, and they're not all of them necessarily, I've actually got a lot more in my actual drawing folder, and funny enough, I actually was going to show off my drawing folder, but the thing is, I was using my camera phone to record the footage, and Apparently Movie Studio doesn't like the camera footage, so I've had to work out other ways. So this is basically it. So these are basically all of the drawings that I've drawn before. They're not necessarily in order from when they were made. They're more in order from when they were scanned because I've, I scan all of my works and put them here so I can upload them to Facebook. And by the way, if you've been on Facebook, if you've been to my Facebook, then you've already seen these before, but this is just the video version of it. So I'm going to go through each one, one by one, tell you a bit about it, and I know it's kind of the Aaron Hansen way of doing it from Game Grumps, but whatever, I want to get right into it. And by the way, this is mostly improv, so if I slur my lines, well, let's face it, I do a Let's Play channel where I do mostly improv, and where I make mistakes constantly, so what are you going to do? So anyway... Let's get into it. The first one is A Drive Extreme Nuzlocke 1. Now, this one is actually for a thing. If you don't know who this is, this is A Drive from Twitch. That's little a, capital D, R, I, V, E. He's a famous Pokemon Twitch streamer who, ironically enough, got me into Pokemon Shiny Hunting. But I've, I've been a big fan of his for quite a while. And he w he did this thing where he did a Pokemon Extreme Randomizer Nuzlocke. Where he would catch all of his Pokemon in shiny form. Through a hacked version of the game. And this is just something I did for him. He actually did make a call out for people to make fan art for him to put at the end of his videos. And this was one of them. So this is A-Drive right here. He's actually a bug catcher. He's it well... His avatar is a bug catcher, and these are actually some of the Pokemon that he got, at least at that point, because I did it part way. Like, here's a shiny Moth. His favorite Pokemon is Mothum, so here's shiny Mothum. And he also got a Whale Lord and a Palpitoad. This actually is not Porygon, funny enough, and I don't want to... You know what? I'm not going to spoil anything. If... if if you find him, you can find him on YouTube. He's done an extreme randomizer shiny lock. Go watch it, it's fun. And this is actually based on something that he did. He actually, as a kid, he was actually on a bowling commercial. We call it advert over here in Britain. But he was actually in a bowling commercial. And so I based this picture on that. So that's, that's his wife saying, people, people, relax. There's plenty of shinies for everyone. Because in the commercial, that's what the lady says. Because this is actually supposed to be a bowling alley. Uh, there's a like little pattern here. Potato recorders. Oh yeah, that's right. Because there's a video of him reacting to that commercial. And he's like, is, he, is it filmed with a potato? And there's me. Because I decided to add me into this situation. And there's, there's my Jigglypuff Terra. There's Tinkerbell, Ribombi, Mighty Mo, Probopass. And here's Shiny Smoochum, Horrorless from my Pokemon Crystal Nuzlocke. So yeah, it's a really cool picture and I spent a lot of time with it. My, though I do admit the hands are kind of floppy. In fact, his hand is almost as big as his arm. Oh, I'm seeing all of the faults already. 
Um, that's supposed to be another Twitch streamer, and I'll get to that in a minute. I just decided to add her in as a, like a little cameo. But yeah, that's basically the bowling commercial in Pokemon form. So all the Pokemon are like, Rah. my Pokemon are like, Rah. and she's like, people relax, there's plenty of shinies for everyone. And that's actually my username on Twitch, Toon Tamagotchi, because somebody took the name Tamagotchi. But yeah, I'm called Toon Tamagotchi on Twitch. Don't bother adding me. It's just a way for me to watch other Twitch streamers. So anyway, that's that's one picture. I actually did four in total, and this is another one. Uh, actually, this does kind of spoil it a little bit, but he's got a shiny bay leaf and a shiny blissey, and yeah, this does kind of spoil. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna leave a little message on screen just to avoid this. But basically, he encountered a Dialga somehow. And it looked very, very different from how Dialga is normally portrayed. I think I think it's called Primal Dialga and it had Bone Rush. Because it was a randomizer, shiny lock, so anything could happen. And it killed off his Whale Lord, so that's why that's why I did that. And this was actually featured a few episodes after the fact, so it wasn't a spoiler back then. But there's Whale Lord. And he's like, what is this crazy monster? And there's Blissey like, hey, you. <laughs> Again, Toon Tamagotchi. Next up. Oh, okay. I didn't actually... Oh, wait. Is this... Is this... Well, I'll explain this one. This one I actually drew in college. I had... Uh, I had a huge fascination with a show called Insectors. And this is one of the characters from it. I'll actually leave a picture here of what who it's supposed to be. So I actually had a, a huge crush on this particular character. So in college, I kind of remembered it and like, you know what? I might as well, might as well draw in my style. So I just drew Alex or Alia as she's called in French. Her hand's kind of weird. I do like the patterns on her wings and I gave her like little anime eyes. Um, so hang on a minute. Oh yeah, that's the same thing, just on the same sheet of paper. I think... Oh, that's actually kind of cool. That's like a little wireframe. Anyway, give me a second, because that's actually not in order. Yeah, because there's the Alex one. And, okay. So yeah, that's the Alex one. You know what, I'll just... I'll just do it like this, whatever. This one I wanted to draw just for fun this was in 2017 when i'm like you know what i want to draw some more so this is basically thomas the tank engine because hey you know what i'm a big fan I actually made him a little stumpy but i used to be as a kid i used to draw thomas characters all the time i used to draw lots of trains and you know <laughs> actually now that i'm looking at it i kind of tried to make it look like they're because you know thomas was shot using models and I tried to make them all like they're actually like wooden props so it's like he's <laughs> it's actually funny to look at so the proportions are kind of eh uh, but Thomas that's a cute little Thomas there uh, what it started you know what that's actually one of the things about it it's like this is one of those drawings that I had a basic concept and then just got greedy as time went on I actually just wanted to draw Thomas with this wagon here. This is actually a CCT Southern Parcel Van. Uh, I think that's what it's called specifically. And it's actually my favorite piece of rolling stock. So I wanted to draw it like that. There's a couple of troublesome trucks. This one here is actually a vent van. Uh, funny enough, my sister looked at this and like, is that diesel at the back? But no, it's just a, it's just a regular vent van with a, troublesome truck face that's actually a good troublesome truck face that's very iconic uh, but yeah there's one there's one peek in there oh yeah that guy's like oh i dropped that oh yeah this was actually i originally made this kind of kind of political in a way but i decided nah it, just make it just make it like normal thomas because there's all this food here and if you actually look at some of these, some of these, like post-it notes, post-it notes, 
Pfft. Clipboards. Why did I brain fart there? If you see some of these clipboards, you might be able to make out the words food bank. And I'm not going to go into detail on what that's about, but basically that's what it was based on. And I just wanted to create something about it. And then I'm like, nah, just make it a simple Thomas picture. There's an express coach at the back. There's Bertie the bus up here. And there's a little bit of Harold. I'm not particularly fond of this version of Harold. He looks a little short for what he is. Though I guess it could be in the distance. But yeah, this is actually Wellsworth now that I think about it. Because there's a signal there. That's actually a track. This is mostly a station. The awning kind of looks meh. But anyway, there's Thomas the Tank Engine. That's actually not a bad picture. So I'm qu quite proud of that. So yeah, I'm going to have to do it like this. Uh, this one is just some basic Rick and Morty fan art. And there's Rick. He's like, ha ha, look at these people. This is actually based on something that... Oh, what was the game called? We were playing a game... There's an ice cream truck in the background. Okay. <laughs> there's a there's an ice cream truck ringing outside. Anyway, Sushi Go, was it? You know what? I'll leave I'll leave some text here on what what we were playing. We were basically playing that game and I just made like an alternate dimension. Kind of like that episode where they go through all the Yeah, I'll have a large person with with extra extra people, something like that. Uh, and it's like chairs ordering y you you know the episode so we kind of made it like that it's like sushi playing with people there's me there's my friend jack <laughs> and it's just like the sushi people on lego chairs because oh yeah someone brought in legos at, at that there's like oh look these legos so it kind of made them sit on lego people so it's kind of like a different dimension of that particular moment where we're playing Sushi Go and we were playing with Legos and we were people, but now there's Sushi people sitting on Lego chairs and they're playing with us as cards. <laughs> Stupid, but that's what it's like. Anyway. Oh yes, this is actually the first D&D &D drawing. I'm actually not happy with this one, but it's basically my character Dora fighting a wolf. Uh, I actually redefined her in this next drawing, which is this one, Dora in Love. And this is actually a very significant part of that D&D adventure, <laughs> the dick and pickle, where Dora, no joke, here's what happens. Um, hang on, I need to drink. So what happens is my character is a orc barbarian, a female orc barbarian, and her main motivation is to basically find a mate and she ended up falling in love with a dwarf. Now what happened is the dwarf was kind of hitting on her at a, at a bar. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to roll to see if she falls for him. And I rolled a one. And so this is the dwarf character, Admir. He actually does not look like this. This is kind of her fantasy. It's like, he's strong, he's buff, he killed a dragon and he's got lots of money. And she's like totally fawning over him. And that's actually Vinny's character. Vinny from 3 to 1 Let's Game was a magician. And that's kind of her, I should say, face palming. It's like, oh, really? I actually wanted to put more detail into this because people were actually fighting at this bar. And I was actually going to put... That's why this door here is off the hinge. But yeah, that's Dora. And, oh, that's actually later in the campaign. That's, that's actually, we encountered this thing... Which kind of tell, which kind of told us that this guy is not to be trusted because he's like possessing this dwarf character that we had to rescue, and he's also got a mountain, not a mountain troll, a cave troll, which I actually based on Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's a mind flare. I just remembered. So he's a mind flare. He's got these under his control, and this thing is actually talking with us telepathically. Uh, I forgot what it's called, an Aberloth something like that again I'll leave it on screen but that's the creature and it was telling us it's like oh you really basically it was telling us that he couldn't trust that we couldn't trust him and so this is us like thinking I don't know what do we do here and this character here is played by another friend of mine I actually didn't know it was female until much later but you know it's a dwarf character dwarf females have beards so got away with that 
he got too close. Oh yeah, that was Vinny being an idiot. He actually went a little too close to this dragon here. And the dragon sneezed on him. And that's my character Dora just laughing. That's actually the dwarf character that we saved from, from this. Yeah, you can tell this is the dwarf. You can tell they're the same dwarf essentially. So yeah, this is all of us laughing. This is actually a snow giant that we kind of befriended. And I skipped ahead a little bit. In fact, hang on. Hmm, where if, can I find it? Because why aren't these in order? Oh yeah. Because early in the campaign we kind of fought another frost giant. And <laughs> there's my friend's character again. Just punching it. Even though it's dead, he kind of wanted to keep on punching. So Dora's just like, all right. So yeah, that's one snow giant. Uh, but this one, hang on, can I find it? Because why aren't, because again, ah, oh. no, that's not it. Ah. Oh. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, this is actually what the dwarf character looked like. And by that, by the way, the dwarf that we saved and the dwarf that my character fawned over are different dwarfs. But this is the dwarf that I fawned over. He became my boyfriend for a long time. And he gave me this, which is a fire maul. And Dora's like, yee. Actually, I really like that one. That one I didn't finish. That was her shoving a harpoon up the butt of a frost giant. But I didn't actually draw the butt. And I really should have. So anyway... Oh yeah, that's actually one of our characters got one of our characters died and that was a really big moment in the campaign. I didn't finish it. I was going to add all the other characters. But yeah, that was a big moment and Dora's just like rest in peace. But anyway. Oh yes, this. This was a non-canon adventure that my friend wanted to That's actually him. I actually made it look like him. <laughs> Just for he's actually got big hands for no reason. But there was this genie that we found, and he's like, "We're gonna give you one wish, one wish each," and we all got a wish, and it was just basically for fun. It's like, whatever, go nuts. Dora actually got a love book that told her the secrets of attracting a mate, and my friend from earlier, he got he basically wanted a wish, his ability to have any wish he wants. Because he didn't want to just get it from him right off the bat. He actually wanted to preserve it. So that's why he's... You know, this hand. It's like, as soon as I decide what wish I want, I have it. And <laughs> TM26... Oh, yeah! He got the power to... He got the power to summon Earthquake. So that's why there's TM26. <laughs> TM26, if you don't know, is Earthquake in all Pokemon games. So that's why I had that in. I don't can't remember what that was. I think that was just a potion of giant strength, I think. Um and Vinny decided to be a real butthole and got the deck of many things, which if you don't know, it's basically you know, you pull cards from the deck and you get special feats. He drew all of them. He got riches, he got retainers. This is actually one of the retainers that was that he was armed to the teeth originally and then he drew another card and is like you have everything taken away from you and so now he's naked because all of his armor is gone and he eventually drew the one where he encountered death and yeah it's death from south park and he's like Murr. and he's like oh i drew this i don't i don't know what the heart the ace of hearts is you could probably look it in the guide somewhere that's the same thing Oh yeah, the the Umber Hulk. I actually did a very good job in recreating the Umber Hulk because I was using a reference. Uh, but yeah, we encountered an Umber Hulk, which by the way, we you can't look at without getting confused. So that's why Dora's got like the... Actually, I gave her like the Teen Titan eyes from that episode of Teen Titans. There's an episode of Teen Titans where they fight Mad Mod and Mad Mod is like, putting them under mind control and you see beast boy like completely hypnotized and so i based it off that so he's like yeah i can't fight and that actually happened to this guy and he crashed into a wall so that that's very cartoony by the way it's like and there's like his little wolf 
Like, huh? And there's Vinny's character again, casting a spell because... Actually, yeah, he closed his eyes and cast the spell. It's actually pretty clever. But anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Vinny decided to dive into this pot. Uh, I mean, I'm skipping out a lot of details, but basically he wanted to dive into the pot to see what was in it because it was a really big pot. And I sort of helped him out. And then the guy who runs the place, who's like a semi-lich, I think, comes in and is like, what the smagging hell are you doing here? Are you doing here? What are you doing? And we're just like, mm, I don't know. I'm just rolling with it, apparently. I love this character, by the way. This character was... By the way, I'm, again, I'm skipping out on a lot of details, but throughout the campaign, you know, whenever Dora would say something, Dora would sound like this. I am Dora. I am Barbarian. That was a really fun character to play, and I think we stopped playing I would like to go back into that campaign because a lot happened uh, again same campaign runaway draw we're all running and it's yeah you can insert the Benny Hill music here it's like bah, 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 bah. but yeah we were all chasing the drow and he tripped but yeah we're all chasing the drow this one I drew in college uh, if you don't know I used to be a really big player of Yu-Gi-Oh and so I drew two of my favorite monsters. This is Steamroid from the Veercroid archetype. This here was harder to draw because with this one I had a reference but this one I had to pull another source essentially. So hang on. Need a drink. This one I had to pull from another source. If you don't know this is actually a monster called Dekoichi the Battle Chanted Locomotive. And if you look at the card, you only see part of him, and he's kind of bent. So I actually pulled a lot of this here from the real-life prototype it's based on, which is a, the D-52, which is also co called Dekoichi. This is actually a, this is basically a real prototype, so that's how I was able to get all the, this detail. Again, this is me drawing a train because I love trains. But that's how I was able to get all this detail with the wheels and the... And the piston rods. Uh, obviously this was easy to do. I actually didn't do the cylinder on this side. And I really should have. Now that I'm now that I'm seeing it. But yeah that's not a bad drawing. And this tender. I had to take a very big guess. There's another, there's another card associated with it. Called Bokoichi the Freightening Car. That showed me a little bit more. On what the tender looked like. Not a bad drawing. That was back in college. I must have been 18 at that point. But anyway, oh yeah, this, you maybe remember from earlier, the A-Drive drawing that I did, and like the little woman in the, at the bottom that was sort of a cameo. This is her, this is L Arg, who is a Twitch streamer. She also used to do shiny hunting, but now she's doing The Sims, and she's a really nice, she's a really nice person. I actually drew this on my way to New York, because I was hoping... I was hoping to meet her in person and give her this and be like, I drew this. And I didn't meet her at that whole convention, which was disappointing. But she did see it later on. I did post it on, like, I think I posted it on her Discord. Again, Toon Tamagotchi is what I'm known as known as, as Twitch. Yeah, this is not bad. That's, it looks just like her. And this is her mascot, Cleffa. And all of these are actually coffee mugs because she has like a board with coffee mugs and all of the the names of all of the people who've subscribed to her. Very simple drawing, but there's a lot of de and she has a whip. She that's one of her like traits. She has a whip, and when you subscribe, there's like a little song and there's like it's really fun, really fun. It's actually not a bad microphone either. Anyway, this was in college. I must have been at least 16 when I made this, uh, but just some basic character designs for for a couple of villains. That's Dozer. I made him like a construction guy. He's got like a construction uh, scoop for one of his arms. Those are cinder blocks for for, <laughs> for knee guards. Uh, that's a Sukumon from Digimon for some reason. That's Ned from Thomas the Tank Engine. I don't know why. I don't know why I did that. I, I think I just like the character so much. Sparrow? 
I actually, I think Sparrow was, I think Sparrow, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, she was like a, oh, hang on, how do I word this? She was like an assassin, she's got like the dual pistols and like the Matrix coat because of course the Matrix was, the Matrix was big at the time. And her trait was she was super, super fast. Like, she was really, really fast. You couldn't catch her. But she, like, traded her muscle mass. So if you if you actually got a punch in, it would, like, really, really hurt her. Because she doesn't have a lot of muscle. So that's kind of, like, her weakness. It's, like, if you hit her at all, it does incredible amount of damage. She's, like, screaming in pain. But, you know, that doesn't happen with her because she's so fast. She can't... You can't catch her, so... What are you going to do? And the whole thing was, like, finding that weakness out. And gluttony from FMA, because, of course. Not... In, wait. Gluttony for a laugh, XD. Not in BVC. Dark City Blood Force. Oh, yeah. That was, like, the thing I did. Um, anyway. Oh, yeah. Another thing in college. I think this was drawn at the same... Maybe the same week as this. But yeah, just some random drawings. Oh yeah, Alex was a friend of mine and he was constantly talking about Oblivion. So I just drew him was like, neat, now. And there's a pigeon. There he is, get him. <laughs> I have blue undies. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember now. Uh, that's Mammymon. Max Mammy, Max Mammymon. Yeah, that's right. Max was the name of uh, Mammy Mon because Mammy Mon's my f Mammy Mon's my favorite Digimon. Mammy 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 Mon. Um, this is a Snow Gobori Mon, and the whole thing with the whole thing with that was I was playing Digimon World Two, and if you knock him out, you could actually see like up his loincloth and see that he's blue undies. And I found I always found that kind of weird, so I kind of drew him and be like, I have blue undies, <laughs> and that's me. I'm so bored. That's a Hitmon top. It's Diglett, an Oddish, and a Magnemite. Why are they all like concerned? I'm like X. Oh yeah, cause Ruby and Sapphire X was the latest booster pack at the time. And there's the spiteful break fan from Thomas. I break for nobody. <laughs> and <laughs> that kind of looks like Foolish Burial from Yu-Gi-Oh. But anyway, uh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, I did a Yu-Gi-Oh fanfic thing. So the whole crux of it was I wanted to create a Yu-Gi-Oh, a separate Yu-Gi-Oh universe. And Victor Sanderson was kind of like the rival. So he was kind of like the Kaiba-esque character. I guess he was more like Zane because he has all these like cyber reptiles. Cyber Serpent was his original name. Cybernetic platform, gyro powered boost condenser, cyber kamakiri, cyber komodo was a big one that had. I remember that had twenty nine hundred attack points, and I think its effect. I could be wrong, but its effect something. I think it hinged on these because there wasn't a lot of reptile monsters in the game at the time, so it kind of made this concept. I think if this was destroyed, it summons out one of these. I think. I'm very vague. I remember this being a Suedo heavy mech support platform kind of card. I don't know why I made Kamakiri. I think because there was like Kamakiri Man and Flying Kamakiri 1 and 2. I don't know. Anyway. Jungle Clan. Uh, yeah, that was like my protagonist's main deck. So you know how like in... In Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Jaden Yuki has elemental heroes. This was kind of like mimicking that. But they were beast warriors. And their whole gimmick was, you know, in order to fusion summon them, you'd need to sacrifice one of a card in, a t in addition to the materials. So you have Giraffe Command is just like a standard monster. But Grizzlord and Leodin the Lion Leader would fuse... I think there was a card associated with it. It's like Jungle Fusion or Fusion of the Clan or something like that. But they would fuse into this, which was 
a really powerful monster with no defense points, I just realized. And the whole point was... Oh yeah, that's right. Jungle Mask was basically her dueling spirit. And the whole crux of it was if you sacrificed him for the fusion for these monsters, then he would give them an additional effect. I'm I'm remembering off the top of my head here. I don't think that's how it's how it worked. If I find them I'll probably I'll probably put them up or something. Groy J Ongda A What are you doing? <laughs> that I drew last year, actually. Anyway. Okay, so I skip that because I actually wanna really emphasize the importance of that previous picture. So this is actually the protagonist for that Yu-Gi-Oh series. She's the one with the Jungle Clan cards. Jennifer Lincoln. Who, by the way, Jennifer is the name of my sister. So I kind of sort of based it on her, but not really. So I kind of named it after her. And then I gave her like little cute little traits. It was very... Oh yeah, that's right. So the crux of this whole thing was I wanted to create a series where the protagonist was female and that was in response to why aren't there any great duelists who are female and why are they all shoved yeah as you can imagine it's i don't i don't want to say sexist but it's kind of it's kind of that thing it's like i want to see a protagonist who is female and do and the whole thing was ugh, the whole thing the whole thing I'm remembering here, by the way. These are like vague memories. I wanted to create a character who was like, I want to be the number one female duelist in the world. And I actually, drew, actually wrote a lot of stories revolved around her. And these are some of her friends. Marvin Croft, who's like a scientist, who's the typical nerd. It's like, aliens from outer space? He had he had an alien deck. If you, if, if you remember, in... Power of the Duelist, there was an archetype based on aliens and, you know, they generate counters and the whole thing was alien counters. Xiao Wong. Xiao Wong had a six samurai deck, I think. And Pete Presley, I think, had an original deck that involved heavy machinery. Uh, anyway. Ugh. So, Jordan... <coughs> Ugh. Sorry, I need to take a little breaths, but this this actually leads into another thing I was doing. So I was playing D and D, and I actually wanted to create other characters. So I kind of did this thing where I would draw character concepts. So I would draw the character, and then the whole picture would emphasize what that character was like. So here's one for Jordan Ratzenberger, the cheese grater. He's kind of like a rat king. And he's like, Ah, oh, come on, mate. I'll, I'll kick you and whatnot. And so, you know, this is basically a Thunderdome. So it's like, he's in a tournament where he's killing everyone. He's like, Ah, come at me. And everyone's watching. There's Dora and her boyfriend kind of watching. She's like, Woo, go. And those are actually the guards. Oh yeah, those are the same guards that are like rooting for... Wait, why are they rooting for this person? He's dead! He's dead! And yet they're like, yay! Oh wait, no, no, this one's like... You can't see it, but he's like... <gasps> like hands close to his mouth kind of thing. Oh yeah, a little Easter egg. That's actually another character which we'll see later. But that's actually me giving him money because... I kind of made a bet with him. And... He's w he's won essentially, and this character's like, give me your money, and I'm like, nah, pay you. Oh yeah, those are the sushi from the Rick and Morty thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> I like to do that. By the way, I like to add like little Easter eggs. Uh, oh yeah, surprise attack. So I was in another campaign. We were in a windmill. So there's like the windmill blades. So it's kind of at an angle, and we actually got the job. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the guard. That's that's the same as this guard. I mean, probably not the same, but the same kind of armor. So if you, like, there's him, there's him. So it kind of gave them the same look. Um, 
my friend rolled this character. I can't remember what the race was called, but it was kind of like a Tengu class. But I rolled this character, who was called McBrayer. And he was kind of like the jolly giant of the group. And we basically get surprised because these people were like in boxes and like, rah, we got the jump on you. And they won initiative because they did that. And that was like the only, that was like the only campaign we ever did. I should really explain the whole D&D &D thing because that's what I used to do whenever I play D&D. &D. What would happen was I'd draw a particular moment of that D&D &D session. That railing is not synced with that one. So it's kind of off balance there. So I would draw a particular moment of that campaign. And that was kind of like my gimmick. I would do one picture for every D&D &D session that we do. And that was like a big moment of that particular campaign. So that was that one. That's McBrayer again. That's more of like a full on shot of him. And he's like, hmm, hello. That was actually before, hang on. That was actually before I started doing this because I do this with all my D&D &D characters now. I didn't do one for Dora and I really should have. But I do all of my D&D &D concepts like this. So that was like a predecessor to that. So if I did this again, I would like put him... Well, first of all, I'd have him like tilted. I'm not going to tilt it. I'd actually have him in center and then like put things around him that kind of explained his character. His gimmick is like he was the cheery one that didn't want to get into fights. But when he did, he's like, I want to use less violence as possible. So I'd probably do that. I'd probably like put flowers around like people trying to attack him kind of thing. That's what I would do if I drew this again. And I probably will in future. This one is actually a very nostalgic one for me. And by the way, I've noticed that I've rambled on for... I can't even tell. Hang on, because I'm recording on Audacity. Check it out. Whoa, that's that's half an hour. Okay, so I'll do this one last. Okay, so I'll leave... I'll do, I'll do a two-parter to this. Because I really want to emphasize what the other one was. But anyway... This one's the last one, but this one's really, really iconic to me because I drew this in college and the big thing about it was these are my these are my best friends over here. This is these are actually a couple now. They're they're basically husband and wife, but they were like boyfriend, girlfriend at the time. And the whole crux of it was they went to conventions and they were telling me how cool it was. It's like Oh, Tom, you've got to come to these conventions. And I'm like, I don't know. I've got a lot to do. And and Mike, this is Mike. And he's like, Tom, I swear I will drag you to it and you will love it. And so I drew this based on that. So that's Mike literally dragging me to this convention. And there's, there's Rachel basically like three tickets. And he's like, because <laughs> he's no, he's got the Japan flag on <laughs> The, Jap the Japanese flag on his shirt for some reason. Funny enough, Vic Mignogna was not at that convention, but I kind of drew that as like a little Easter egg kind of thing because I actually wanted to meet Vic Mignogna at that point. I think, now that I... I think that might have been 2010. Oh, it must have been so long ago. But yeah, Vic Mignogna. I actually met Vic Mignogna three times in certain conventions so not the first convention but I would meet him further down the line so that's kind of like kind of like foreshadowing get your expo tickets here so yeah this one's really special to me because not only not only is this a drawing from college and not only is it super old it kind of frames a moment in time I've never been to a convention before but now it's like conventions are basically my idea of a holiday because I love conventions now. I I try to go to as many conventions as I can to meet voice actors and hang out with friends. And this is kind of encapsulates what happened on my first my first Comic Con. My first the first one was MCM incidentally. M MCM London. But man that's why this one in particular is special. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that because my word the time Oh, I'm actually going to split this up in parts. So, 
so yeah I didn't actually explain I actually cut a little bit of this out because it got to a particular drawing a little too early and I really I really didn't emphasize how important it was I was slurring my line so I cut that out so that's why that edit exists but anyway in the next part which is next week that's actually a good excuse to leave it till next week actually but next week I'm gonna continue going down all of these so until next time guys thank you very much for watching this is Tomagotchi signing off click click don't forget to like comment and subscribe click 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 Tamagotchi